I had a great question about net carbs and, and I wanted to address it. And we're going to talk about what it is and why would we need to uh, know what a net carb is. So a net carb is a term used when you are deducting your fiber grams from your total carb grams on a label. So for example, when you look at the label, you'll see here at the top, the calories, and you'll see the fat, all that, you're always going to get a total carbohydrate number in grams. So that's 37. So what a net carb is, is they say that you should take away the dietary fiber, deduct that from the total carbs, and that's going to give you your net carbs. So it's really that formula. It's really that simple. Your total carbs of the food or the product minus the fiber carb grams, and that's going to give you your net carbs. Now, some people ask me that they'll be like, well, why do we do that? Why do they do that? Well, their opinion, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you what the industry is doing. I, we, I don't do this. I don't deduct my fiber from my car. I don't do any of this. It's too, it's just way too much complication. And I'll, I'll share my reasons why, but I'm just giving you, you know, what the industry standard does, but there, it is true that fiber, when you ingest it, it doesn't have any sort of an, uh, uh, a glycemic or an insulin response. It's kind of like, kind of like free carbs per se, right? Um, so when you're eating, let's say vegetables and it has a lot of fiber in it, well, vegetables are just really healthy for you. They're very low in, in carbs in general. So, you know, for me to go sit there and take a, a total carb of, of a piece of broccoli and then deduct the fiber from it and, and calculate that when broccoli in itself is nothing bad about broccoli at all, right? Then it, it just doesn't make sense to me to, to go through this rigmarole to do it. But that is how you calculate it. So they're, they're saying that if you can deduct fiber from a particular product from the total carbs, that is your net carb. So that's what net carbs means. It's your total carbohydrate on the label, and then you deduct it from the total carbs, you deduct the fiber. So in this particular, here's another example. This is a donut, actually. So you have total carbohydrates of 10 grams. The dietary fiber is eight. So now your net carbs would be two. So I wanted to show this example because this is a donut. So if you're looking at net carbs, in, in your dietitian or your uh, diabetes educators telling you, you got to want to go strictly by net carbs, strictly by net carbs. Okay. Well, you eat a donut and it's net carbs of two. There's no nutritional value in a donut. Come on, let's be real. Right? So even though it might be net grams of two, there's no nutritional value and it still has 10 grams of carbs and it's not healthy for you. Right? So difference between a product like this versus like a vegetable would be the net carbs might be less in this, but it's not nutrient value. It's, there's no nutri nutrition in it. And that plays a role, a huge role when you're trying to decide whether or not you want to count carbs or whether you want to eat better foods. I'm going to go into that in a little bit. Now, there's one more thing that they want you to do. There's something called sugar alcohols. So you got sugars on a label and you have sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols, what are they? Well, they are substitutions for sugar. And a few common sugar alcohols are mellitol, xylitol, isomel, sorbitol, lacatol, erythritol, and mannitol. Now, when you see sugar alcohols on a label, this is what you'll see. You'll, you'll, it'll actually say sugar alcohols. So the other... Thing that they want you to do, they meaning whoever the industry, when you're calculating net carbs is, they want you to also deduct the sugar alcohols. So now the net carbs, not only do you deduct the fiber, but now you deduct the sugar alcohols. So now that's really going to be another step. So let's say this label here has eight total grams of carbs. Fiber is six, so you minus six. Sugar alcohol is one, so you minus one. So now the net carb of this is going to be one, not eight. Okay. So again, if you want to spend the time to, to deduct all these, I don't see an extreme upside 
because it's a lot of work. And my opinion is what's more important is what you're putting in and the glycemic index of a certain food or a sugar alcohol. So th there is something called a glycemic index and an insulin index. And I, I hesitated to go, go down this direction tonight, but I think it's really important that you understand because I want to try to help you understand that instead of having to count carbs, like net carbs, let's look more at how the food, when it goes in, how it's reacting in the body. That's really more important. You guys have heard me talk before about calories in, calories out. Calories don't really matter due to the hormones in the body. It's, it's the same thing with this, right? It's like when you put something in that has a net carb of two, but it's a donut versus net carbs of 10, that's broccoli, which is going to be better for you nutritionally? Of course, the broccoli. Why? Because it has micronutrients in it that's about healthier for you, and it's going to actually heal your body on a cellular level, which the most important thing is we want to know how, we're, how our bodies are running internally. So there is something called the glycemic and the insulin index. The glycemic index is how fast a carbohydrate is digested or broken down into the blood and how much power it has to raise the blood sugar, the speed at which raises, it raises the blood sugar. So you could have something that has a very low net carb but has a high glycemic index. For example, let's go back to this list. Malitol. Malitol is a sugar alcohol. It is very high on the glycemic index, which means that even though it's a sugar alcohol on the label, it might only be one or two grams on the label as a sugar alcohol. Even though it's only a net of one or two grams, it's going to spike your insulin because it's high in the glycemic index. It's really complicated when you start to take your total carbs and you minus the fiber and you minus their sugar alcohols, if you really don't know the impact it has on your blood sugars and your insulin. Because high glycemic foods are going to cause insulin resistance, and that's just going to make your ability to heal your body, lose weight, whatever it is that you want to do, very difficult. The other thing, there's an insulin index. Most people don't even know what an insulin index is. Most people will be concerned about the glycemic index, but the insulin index is, is non-carbohydrate foods that affect insulin. When you eat sugar, you trigger insulin. However, there are foods that you eat that are not sugar foods, but do trigger insulin. Flour, right? Certain chemicals, toxins in the body, and also sugar alcohols. So when you have high insulin in the body, you're now going to gain weight because insulin is always storing. So it doesn't matter if your net carbs are low, if your insulin is high and your, glyce your sugars are high, based on the indexes, the glycemic index and insulin index, you're not going to lose weight. So I think it boils down to we have to know what the result, you know, what is that we want to do. What is the most important? Is it important to count the net carbs or is it important to just like eat good quality food? that you know is low on the insulin and the glycemic index. Yes, I think it's more important to eat foods that are whole foods, that are healthy for you, that are processed, that have very low sugar alcohols, very low processing. And anything on the label that you can't read is a sign that it's processed, right? So I think it's more important just to really eat high quality, non-processed food. Why? Well, because when you eat processed food, when you eat foods that, even if you're counting carbs, you guys listen to me. So many people are so hung up on net carbs that they'll go to a store, they'll buy an organic box of crackers and the net carbs will be really low. And they'll think, oh, not going to affect my, not going to affect my blood sugars at all because the net carbs are low. But crackers are made with wheat flour or cornstarch or, or flours, and flour is extremely high on the insulin index, meaning it doesn't matter if the net carbs are low. You eat, in, you eat flour and sugar, flour, processed flour, your insulin is going to raise. 
And then what happens when your insulin raises is you're, you have insulin that you're going to store fat. You're going to store, store, store. So I think you have to really be more concerned with the quality of foods you put in versus sitting there counting, you know, all your net carbs. I mean, that's just what I think is more important. Okay. So when you are trying to decide whether or not you should count carbs, I think you really have to understand what is the result that you want. What result do you want? Because you could have a carb intolerance when you have a carb intolerance, okay, when you're, when you're intolerant to carbs, no matter what, if it's low carbs, if you're intolerant to certain carbs that are high on the glycemic and the insulin index, you're going to have a really difficult time in losing weight. So I think you have to first figure out what, what the result is, right? So those of you who are want to, want to count carbs, net carbs, tell me why. Like, is it you want to lose weight or is it that you want to heal the body, reverse your diabetes, uh, get off medications? What is the result? Because just counting net carbs is not going to, it's not going to long-term help keep your weight off or help you lose weight long-term if you're, if you're eating high insulin and high glycemic foods. So I think you first have to decide like, what is it that, what is it that you want the result to be? If you want to heal your insulin resistance and heal your diabetes, you've got to be more concerned with the quality of foods you put in. If you want to lose weight, you for sure, you know, you want to have lower carb, lower carb generally, but you also want to make sure that the carbs that you eat have a lot of nutrition in them so that you can heal the body at a cellular level and keep your insulin low. Because when your insulin is high, doesn't matter what you eat, if your insulin is high, you're going to gain weight. You're always going to be storing. Okay. Everybody is different. Their metabolisms are different. Your, your, how you burn sugar and burn carbs is based on your health condition. If you got prediabetes or diabetes, you absolutely have insulin resistance. And that is going to be really challenging for you to, you know, to, you're going to have to eat different, differently. Counting net carbs, if you have a health condition is, is not going to help you. You've got to do combination of a bunch of things. Everybody's metabolisms are different based on their age, based on their race, based on how active you were as a child, based on your activity level, all of that. And your carb tolerance, that is based on, you know, people ask, like, how do you measure your carb tolerance? Well, it's based on your metabolic response, which is how effective is your body at producing insulin and how receptive are your cells on a, on a cellular level and your glucose response. And the biggest thing about knowing your carb tolerance is how do you feel after you eat carbs? That's the biggest deal. Like, how do you feel? There's some people that will eat low carb, but they won't feel very good with certain carbs. Some people, when you eat vegetables, you don't feel good. You really, if you eat vegetables and you don't feel good, you feel bloated and you feel not good after you eat good quality food, then, you know, then there's other things going on there. And it's not going to matter what your net carbs are. If you're not feeling good after you eat, you know, 10 grams of carbs, you know what I'm saying? So there's just so much involved with that. I think it's more important than just adding up your net carbs, because if you're, if you're in this group, I'm, I'm, I'm safe to assume that you probably have prediabetes or type two diabetes, or you're overweight, or you don't feel good. You have fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome or metabolic syndrome, or you just, you know, eat, I mean, even me, it's like, I just want to, I, I want to be healthy and, and maintain my health. So some of you might be in here just because you've recovered from something and you want to just learn and you want to stay healthy. So we have to be more conscious of healing our bodies first before we worry so much about calories in, calories out, or counting carbs. That is my position. That's how I feel. I think it's more important to take an assessment of how you feel, what's going on, and then find a strategy or a protocol that can help you heal your body on a cellular level. Because if you're not healing your body, you're not going to lose weight anyway or keep it off long term. And you're not going to feel very good and you're not, and you're not going to be able to get off medications. Right. So I think again, 
before you make a decision whether or not you should count net carbs, I think you have to ask yourself that question. I think you have to say, well, what's my goal? If my goal is to lose weight, well, then I'm, I have to be more concerned about the insulin in my body. Because if you have insulin in your body, you're not going to lose weight. If you have high insulin, you're just not. It's going to stop your fat burning hormones. Losing weight is so easy, but it's so complicated at the same time. Our bodies are very complex. The process to lose weight, though, once you know that, once you learn how to keep your insulin low and how to fix your body in a cellular level, cellular level, it's so easy. But I can see why everybody in the world is confused because you're not being taught what I'm teaching you. You guys are being taught that you need to, you know, go on metformin and insulin to lose weight and stay stay on on drugs or or metabolic enhancers to lose weight, or you guys need to count carbs, or you need to count calories, or you need to, you know, eat six times a day to keep your metabolism going, or all of that is just, it's old, outdated data that doesn't work for 95% of the population, especially women who have hormone imbalances, who have issues with, you know, uh, their cells anyway, due to the hormones. So I'm here to tell you that I'm going to give you permission to not count, not count carbs. I am. I'm going to give you permission. I think a better strategy for you will be just eat real food. Just eat real food. Quit counting the carbs. Like, honestly. Like, honestly. Like, quit counting your calories. Quit counting your carbs. Just eat real food. You guys are smart. You know what real food is right? You know what real food is. Obviously, donuts, cookies, crackers, cupcakes, Cheetos, Doritos, you know, McDonald's, all of that. That's not real food. Come on, you know that, right? So just putting high quality nutrition salads and vegetables and, uh, you know, no gluten and, and, you know, eliminate dairy and buy as much organic as you can. I mean, just, just even that step will be a Huge, you'll, you'll see so much better results from cleaning up your nutrition than you will counting your net carbs. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you will see a lot better results by just cleaning up your nutrition. Now that can be complicated because for a lot of us, you know, you're, the next thing you're thinking is like, yeah, but I don't know what to eat. I don't know how to eat. I don't know how, you know, I don't know you know, all of that. I, I get that. But I think the first step is to just clean up your food by eating, you know, and, and you can, you know, most of you are on these keto diets, right? I, I'm not a big fan of keto just because it doesn't, dirty keto is all about fat, 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 and no vegetables at all. I like a combination of a lot of nutrient dense foods, with, with fats, some fats for sure, you're being told not to have fats. If you have diabetes, you're being told not to have, you know, certain things. You're being told you can have a lot, tons of dairy. You're being told all this conflicting information. And I've done videos on all this. So I don't want to go off the, off the topic too much. But what I'm saying is that I would encourage you guys to really take a look at, uh, assess what you've been eating. Have you been eating out a lot? Have you been eating fast food? Have you been eating more packaged stuff? Have you been counting net carbs, but still eating processed foods? Have you not had a vegetable in like four months? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you eating a lot of, you know, non-organic meats? You know, so start, start looking at that instead and change that. And it also, depending on the goal, whether it's to lose weight or reverse your diabetes or get off medications, it's the same for everybody. You want to clean up your nutrition, put in health, healthy, quality, high quality foods so that you can heal your body on a cellular level. I think that is more important than counting net carbs. Okay, you guys?